In section 14.4, we begin our exploration of triple integrals in Cartesian coordinates. So let's make a little love note to ourselves that thus far we've used double integrals to evaluate three-dimensional functions over two-dimensional regions. We've also used double integrals to find the area of these regions. But in section 14.4, we start to explore triple integrals and use them to evaluate four-dimensional functions over three-dimensional regions, as well as using them to find the volume of this region. So a little introduction here with our notation we have a triple integral over a solid region in three dimensions d of a function of f of x, y, z, dv. And we want to note here that this dv is the volume differential. And so our volume differential leads us to the order of integration. So with triple integrals, because we have three variables, there's going to be six possible orders. So for example, dx, dy, dz, dx, dz, dy, dy, dx, dz, dy, dz, dx, we could have dz dx dy or dz dy dx. And while at first glance this six possible orders can seem a little overwhelming, we want to make a note that the order that you choose is going to be based on either personal preference or whatever is going to make the situation less complex. And we'll be able to see that using the limits of integration. So with your outer limits here, these should always be constant. So the outer bounds should always be constant to real numbers. The middle integrals limits should be functions of the outer integrals variable. functions of the outer integrals variable. And last but not least, the inner limits should be functions of both the outer and middle integrals variables. So this rule, or these rules here, can be helpful in deciding which order of integration to use. The outer limits must be constants, especially if you're looking for the volume. The middle limits need to be function of the outer integrals variable. And the inner limits, or the inner integrals limits, need to be functions of both the outer and the middle integrals variables. So let's take a peek at a setup here. So you want to make note that the following is one of three possible general regions for, tri for triple integrals. So let's suppose that f is a continuous function over a solid region d, such that d is the set of all ordered triplets, x, y, z, such that x is greater than or equal to a, less than or equal to b, that y is greater than or equal to h of x, less than or equal to g of x, and that z is greater than or equal to capital H of x, y, but less than or equal to capital G of x, y. So we can see in looking at this, we have our constant bounds on x. The bounds on y are functions of the outer integrals variable. And then our inner integral here, z, is functions of, has bounds that are functions of both x and y. And this is where 
little g, little h, capital G, and capital H are all continuous functions. So then, if f is, grint, is integrable over this solid region D, then the triple integral can be evaluated as an iterated integral. So we can say that this triple integral over D of the function f of x, y, z, dv, is equal to the integral from a to b, the integral from h of x to g of x, and then our inner integral is capital H of x, y, capital G of x, y, and we have our function f of x, y, z, and the order of integration here will be dz, dy, dx. So let's take a peek at what this would look like graphically. So let's suppose, we'll say here is our function, z is equal to g, of x, y, that upper bounding curve, and we'll say somewhere down here is the lower bound, which is h of x, y, and we want to find the volume of this solid region. So we'll connect these, and we want to fill this in here. And so this is a whole, a whole solid region D. So we can see that out the inner bounds here on Z, and to see that two-dimensional region that we're used to from double integrals, we think about the shadow or the projection that this solid casts into the XY plane. So this purple region here that we're shading, this is our familiar region R. 